Greetings and welcome to St. Bridget Parish in Mesa, Arizona, everyone. However, you're viewing this celebration of the 33rd Sunday of Ordinary Time, the end, near the end of our liturgical year. God has given us many gifts, many talents, the earth, and many other resources, and we are called to be responsible and care for all of these gifts and talents that we have and to bring forth the kingdom of God. Our gathering song is Walk in the Rain as we rise together and sing and pray. Close as tomorrow the sun shall In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your, your spirit. spirit. We keep hearing these parables one after another during the uh, fall, during late summer, and, and now towards uh, the end of the liturgical year, which is fast upon us. Um, and the parables that Jesus gives us are invitations to consider what the kingdom of God is all about. Um, the culture of Christ, the reign. How are human relationships being transformed? How is there a new order in these relationships? How is the old order passing away? And uh, the possibilities for what it means to be truly human are being manifested by uh, Jesus Christ and especially by the hints he, give us about, he gives us through the parables about what this um, new creation will be like. Sisters and brothers, God has bestowed on us many gifts and talents. We pause now to consider how we have used these gifts to promote God's kingdom. Lord Jesus, you give us words of wisdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you speak of peace, not fear. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are with us until the end of time. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always take delight in your service, for only through our faithfulness to you, the author of every good, will full and lasting happiness be ours. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains flax and wool and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Who's 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. 
To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to their ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and they will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what they have will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. As we've been discussing these uh, parables of Jesus for a couple of months now, and they, they all have to do with the kingdom of God. And what I've proposed, and it should be really simple with this parable, is don't take, take it to mean that the master or the king or the, land, the rich landowner are stand-ins for God. We, we mistakenly have done this in the past. And so the main character of the story, the, the authority figure, is not a stand-in for God. In fact, it's a stand-in usually for a, an abuse of authority. Or, uh, in other words, why, it's about, why these parables are about the kingdom of God is that authority is going to be something other than you thought it was, and it's going to order human relationships in a new way. And so Jesus presents authority figures to people that they would understand and uh, understand pretty much as repressive, and Jesus is saying, things are going to be different. So this, so this parable starts not with uh, a rich landowner, or this or that, just a man. <laughs> and that's how all the other ones were too. It's just this guy. Now, this guy happens to uh, own servants and needs some work done. And, and so he entrusts them with the responsibilities. The, uh, the famous conclusion of the parable is very simple. As the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And Jesus' listeners would have understood that. And there's injustice in that system. And so Jesus is saying in the kingdom of God, that is not how it's going to be. And it's up to the followers of Jesus to, to work for and look for creative ways of this being transformed. Certainly our hearts are being transformed by the Holy Spirit so that we see that what we are called to as the baptized is not just um, a, a beautiful piety, as lovely as that can be, but action in our world. Uh, that flows from our life of uh, deep involvement, deep relationship with God. So we, we won't be attracted to helping to bring about the kingdom on earth, and that's all that Jesus preached, basically, was that the kingdom is now. This new creation is happening. This new order of human relationships where the uh, insiders become the outsiders, and the outsiders get a greater share of the blessings and goods that God has intended for all of us to experience. Um, and so we, we don't, you know, we get these snippets, these little images of what this, this new creation could be like, this new way of being human and in relationship with each other could look and be like. It's not going to be like the old um, oppressive regimes and systems. Um, and then we have the image of the, of, of, of the poor guy that, 
you know, probably realistically was, knew about his master's uh, reputation uh, and was, um, because of, of his fear, he just w wanted to play the simplest game and just, just hide this thing so I don't lose it and I can give it back to him when he returns. So that seemed good enough. And that might have been what any of us would do. You know, it's like, well, at least I didn't lose this, you know. So um, that seems noble enough. But in the, <laughs> the master is responding to not so much that the guy didn't do stuff with the money. That would have been nice, I'm sure, in the master's mind. He's responding to his sense that he's been feared, that this, this guy has, is, is interpreting his relationship with the master as one of, uh, that is turbulent. And, and, and one that is, is fear-based. And fear restricts our capacity to be creative with our gifts. Uh, fear of, of all sorts of things, of being misunderstood, of, of feeling uh, humiliated, of, of not doing it quite the right way. You know, um, I've worked with Kathy now for a, a couple of years coming up on how to do art and environment in the church. And, you know, when we first started talking about that, there, there was a learning curve, you know, but, but she wasn't afraid to uh, use her talents that she had for how to arrange things beautifully, materials and uh, the gifts of God that come to us in uh, the, uh, the, the flowers and the, and, the, and, the, and the joy that that brings and how to bring that alive in, in the church, that, that grows, you know. So with a little, a little awareness of a gift that we have, like with, like with Kathy, then it becomes something that becomes uh, more. You know, so we learn all these different little ways that we can do this or that to enhance the, the joy of the celebration uh, through art and environment. And then getting other people uh, to help uh, with that, uh, like Pamela sitting there, you can't see her. But <laughs> Uh, you know, so it grows. These gifts grow and expand is where I'm going with this. And so um, that's, and that's because we don't, we, we might have some fear, we might have some insecurity, but we walk through that, you know, and that's what Jesus is calling his disciples to do. It's, it's, it's human to have certain uh, apprehensions and fears, and, 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 and Jesus says that's okay, but let's, let's, let's reconsider and the big reconsideration is, what's your fear of God? What does that mean? We hear about fear of God. Mostly what that means in Scripture is a type of respect, a type of, a type of honoring. Like you would say you fear your father. You actually love your father, but you also know not to cross certain lines. <laughs> you know that your father has a certain um, authority and wisdom to share with you that needs respect. That's what fear of the Lord means. It doesn't mean literally to be scared of God, but a lot of people act that way. And that's what this parable reveals too, is that when we're scared of God, when we have this false image, like the servant who, who just buried his uh, treasure, uh, uh, he, he, had, he, was, he was acting totally only out of his fear and his apprehension. And so nothing, nothing could grow, nothing could become more, nothing could be probably a misconception, or, or maybe it wasn't, but whatever. It, 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 it restricted his ability to be creative and, and, and to trust and, and to grow uh, um, in, in his relationship with this man, the landowner. Um, you know, and the other people that, that he entrusted stuff to didn't seem to have that same opinion. You wonder why maybe he didn't, talk to them some more and see why they had a pretty much decent opinion of, <laughs> of the guy that, you know, so, so also in the kingdom of God, this new way of being in relationship with each other invites us uh, to a type of trust in which we can share the gifts that are given to us rather than hoarding them or clinging to them. We still tend to be a little cliquish as a society. You know, we find our little niche and then we kind of all uh, feel comfortable there and, 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 and don't expand our horizons. And it's sort of like the, uh, you know, the 430 mass people sometimes don't know the, what's now the 10 o'clock mass people, you know, and, unless we have a festival. And then, oh, oh, you go to the, that mass, yeah. So, um, you know, that's just a small example of how, how we can kind of just get in a comfort zone. Um, and it's, it's comfortable to not take any risk. But the kingdom of God is going to involve risk. Sure enough, Jesus says, the only thing I promise you is the cross. 
Well, what's interesting about that? Well, it's, it means that um, I'm going to be involved in a process of transformation in my life and in helping to transform the face of the earth. You know, I have a reason, a project for life, uh, a, a direction, a purpose, an, an integrity about who I am to be and what I am to do uh, with other Catholic Christians and, and, and all people of faith in the world uh, to help bring about uh, this kingdom of God. And if God is love, then what do we fear about love? What are we afraid of about love? That's a big question uh, for our culture today. What are we afraid of about compassion and caring for one another and for the less privileged and, and for the marginalized? What, what's our fear about all that? You know, there's something to really um, ask for healing about and to ponder and to invite the Holy Spirit to, to continue transforming our imaginations uh, that we can uh, look for ways to continue working to bring about the kingdom of God on earth in our day, especially here uh, in the community of St. Bridget. We're going to be hearing uh, from Diane a little later in the announcements about our spirituality center. And in order to be interested in doing something, we have to have a starting place of being in right relationship with God. We find right relationship with God in Christian community, and all, but also in the depths of our own personal prayer life. Without a personal prayer life, I'm not going to find much motivation. I won't have a relationship with God that's strong enough to, want to, to motivate me to take risks or to not live in fear or to be creative. You know, I, I have to have that strong foundation with the holy in my life uh, to trust in it, uh, to go out from there, to do something in the world, to change the to help change the world into a new creation. Without that foundation, then of course I'm not going to risk anything. So it's so important to, and we offer that here in the parish, uh, many ways to, to increase our personal prayer life uh, so that it can, can contribute to the building up of the body of Christ and the manifestation of the culture of Christ uh, in our world. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we wait in hope for the coming of the Lord Jesus, we offer our prayers for those who are in need. For the church, that we may generously share our gifts of time, talent, and treasure to build the reign of God we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater respect for the dignity of every person, that we may value every human life as a pearl of a great price, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of our nation, that God will heal wounded relationship and mistrust among neighbors, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have, have experienced abuse, that God will heal their painful memories and give them courage to move forward, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the hungry and homeless, that they may find adequate food and proper shelter, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the earth, our common home, that we may recognize our responsibility as stewards of God's creation, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from the coronavirus and for those separated from lo loved ones due to the pandemic, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Hear the prayer of your people, O God, and make us one in the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the work for his kingdom, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through the mystery of his cross and resurrection, he freed us from the yoke of sin and death and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set apart to proclaim your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join their unending chorus of praise. Holy, 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 Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. We give you thanks and praise. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas and Eduardo, our bishops, the clergy, and all who minister in your name. We give you thanks and praise. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. I invite you to mention the loved ones uh, that you would like remembered at this Mass. Welcome these beloved into the light of your face. We give you thanks and praise. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, Saint Bridget, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching and encounter, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who you live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Mercy on us. On this day. 
away the sins of the world. On whose day, on whose day, grant us peace, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. What is our service to be, our sacred faithfully love others tenderly this is our task what is the good news we bring in whose name shall we sing dare to proclaim courage in face of fears laughter in place of tears Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our St. Vincent de Paul Society here at St. Bridget generally has a food and toilet to drive this time of year and that's going to continue it's just a little different um with this they're not handing out bags ahead of time so it will be the weekend of november 21st and 22nd before all the masses there is a flyer in our bulletin that has a list of the items that are needed you can drop off in the carts by the doors or on the lindsay parking lot for those parishioners who aren't coming to mass in person the St. Vincent de Paul Society will also be accepting the donations curbside in the Lindsay parking lot, of course, following social distancing protocols. And 
Diane Saunders is um, our adult formation consultant and she handles a lot of the activities at our spirituality center. So welcome, Diane. She has a few words as well. Well, it's wonderful to get to be with all of you this morning. I'm sure you, like myself, have grown in appreciation for the many gifts and graces we share together in this wonderful faith community at St. Bridget's. I'm here today to get to share with you some of the creative ways we're responding to this time um, as, as opportunities through the Spirituality Center that we have worked on. And as our readings share today, what's so important is that we keep about growth and growing our gifts and how can we do so and stay nourished in these challenging times. Well, so I'm gonna share with you some of the programs that we've developed just to help with that. Um, but first of all, I wanna share kind of a vision that might help you navigate these days. To the Jewish people, they, there were many ways they identified Jesus as a prophet, but one of them was how he prayed. And as we read scripture, Jesus went off into the desert, he went up into the mountains, he went by the lakeside, very much like their prophets of the Old Testament had done so as well, have gone to the caves and to the mountaintops. So that was the sign of how prophets prayed. Well, no doubt we are in some very unusual times and very prophetic times in many ways. So the idea of being invited into our caves um, it is not unusual. It's not out of our Christian tradition. And so what we're hoping to do is to help you find ways to pray and grow and grow your gifts in this time. And always the prophets in these times of prophetic change, they always were growing in their intimacy of God, not for themselves, but always to bring back the voice of God, the ways of God for the transformation of the life of the community. So we wanna share with you some resources we've put together to help you grow in this challenging time. We've created a beautiful brochure. Centering prayer is a really important practice. Father Scott speaks to it a lot and we practice it as a staff together. We have many centering prayer groups within this community that now are able to gather together again in safe ways. So we invite everybody to really uh, take time to learn more about this practice. We created this beautiful brochure that speaks of the theology, um, offers resources, shares about the groups um, in the community that you can learn more about Centering Prayer. We've also developed a virtual series, a four-part lecture series, that we've brought together people from all over the valley who are well-practiced in centering prayer, Father Scott himself. And you can find this little card in the narthex and access these, this four-part series on the practice, the, the theology, and the benefits of centering prayer. I've come to appreciate it so much to have this practice in my life during this time. And I, I have, in being out gardening these days, um, a, this image of our palm tree that really didn't do well during our very hot, hot summers in Arizona. But how is that palm tree renewing itself? All that green, that growth is coming from within. And that's very much what Centering Prayer can offer for us. The other opportunity, we have another four-part series um, on the, our website on growing the wisdom from the women doctors of the church. And no doubt, this is a time where wisdom is needed in new ways. So to learn from these four women doctors identified four saints, they're, it's, they're a very valuable resource from wonderful scholars in our community. And lastly, we've been able to invite Richard Groves of the Sacred Art of Living series, um, the Sacred Art of Living Center, 
coming back to do a week mission with us the first week of Advent. All these series will be virtual. Um, you, they will be found the, through our website, through St. Bridget's website. And I'm just going to share with you a little bit of their titles and what they're about. We begin on December 1st with a revival of the Celtic monastic tradition. And that's an opportunity to learn about the early Celtic church and their sense of community and the empowerment of the laity in the life of the church. And that will be on Tuesday nights. We'll be gathering here as well um, in a very safe COVID environment. The other opportunity is an all-day retreat on Friday, December 4th for Healing the Healers. And this is an opportunity for learning about caregiving, which we're all involved in in these days, as well as grieving and how to walk through these very difficult times and grow strength. The last one is our silent retreat day, the Paschal Mystery and Invitation, again, so relevant for these days. So we just wanted you to know that these wonderful resources are here for growth and nourishment. Over at the Spirituality Center, there's ways to gather safely and also through our website. So we hope you can join us. Thank you. Thanks so much, Diane, and all the great work you do um, at the Spiritual, Spirituality Center and all of the wonderful people that are involved in, in doing uh, that, um, cultivating those gifts in our community and sharing those gifts and inviting everyone into uh, discovering uh, richer and, and, and deeper and broader um, awareness of the reality of God in our world and in our lives and, and how to share that with one another better. Um, it's just a, a, a beautiful gift we have, that the, the Spirituality Center here at the parish. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Go back to weep with songs of joy.